Welcome to Many Talks Podcast, talking all business, entrepreneurship, property development, finance, and investment. Okay, Reese Many here, um, your host from Many Talks. Um, as, as explained before to our listeners that listen when we release new podcasts every month, we've got some serial entrepreneurs that we've brought to the podcast. We've got a serial entrepreneur, um, somebody that starred in a TV show recently as well. Yeah. Um, really excited to introduce Paul Rowlett onto our show today. Um, he's a serial entrepreneur, CEO of Branded. Um, we're going to run through his business model, what he's done, how he started. Um, so look, Paul, thanks for coming on. Thank you. Um, pleasure, pleasure to have you. Obviously, before we talk about your um, TV appearances and, and becoming a star um, on on our screens, let, let's talk about um, how you started. H- how did you get into being an entrepreneur? Well, it's a, it's a similar question to a lot of people. I mean, how do you, are you born with it? I don't know. Is it, is it, is it you know? It's, <laughs> is it, it in you already? I don't do you know. Think? I don't know. My dad was always, um, you know, going down the old tip and getting second-hand bikes and yep. rear renovate, you know, that kind of upbringing, you know, okay. um, reuse and recycle and sell on kind of thing, car yep. boots, that kind of thing. But um, I fell into uh, business life. I had a tuck shop when I was a kid. I used to sell second-hand clothes. I used to sell okay. knocked-off clothes as well, to be honest. Um, um, and, yeah, I've always been involved in the business kind of lifestyle and, and entrepreneurism. Um, and the what business... age was that, that that started? Tuck shops and things like nine, that? Nine, nine ten. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I had one. So really but you know what? I had all the prof- profits. You know? <laughs> I literally used my pay brand money. I went to Macro, got the yeah. old suite, sold my little... Uh, little school, yeah. Yeah, it was, it was good. You know, teach yourself. But obviously, yeah. you need to get your return on investments, which you never did. Um, but, yeah, it was good. Okay. Um, but always been interested, you know. Always, always growing up, you know, watching the Dragons Den, you know, uh, Richard Branson, you know, the, you know, even the Alan Sugars and stuff like that. Yeah. I've always been interested in business, so I think, well, I think you are born with something, can you? You've got, mm, you've got there's to be a spark there. Yeah, at a young age, yeah. I think that. Um, and I think also um, attention, as you can tell, my attention. I've got, I can't ever work for someone, you know. You yeah. can't. I mean, I've got a history which I'll explain that I've, I've pretty much been fired from my, all my jobs. Serious jobs. Interesting. Um, and is that because I don't listen? Maybe I don't know. But it's it's something that's in you that you just want to try and you try and not not agree with them. You know, you're trying yeah. to be. You know, I think I'm better. Maybe I don't know. Maybe a bit, a bit more creative. So, h- how was your school years? What? How? I mean, myself <sighs> um, and I didn't get on at school. I didn't enjoy school one no, one bit. Um, and there's probably a lot of people out there going through the same experience that I had at school and talking to yourself off camera, um, you said you had the same kind of problem at school. It wasn't, you, you didn't just fall into it and you, you weren't a... I've, I mean, I've, I've said before, I weren't a bad kid. I was just a yeah. bit naughty, you know? So I was the kid that was disruptive. I was a kid that, I, in the end, I got detentions and they won't give me any more because they won't turn up to them. <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. So, um, but, you know, I wasn't actually rude to, 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 um, to teachers. They just didn't, I think they gave up on me a little bit, to okay. be fair. Um, never academic. But always had always had like a, a good eye for like numbers. You know, yeah. I'm pretty good with numbers. Never got any qualifications in it, but I seem to remember numbers well. Um, but things like maths and sorry, I mean, things like English and French, I ain't got a clue. Yeah. You know. And what um, was it at school that you you didn't enjoy? I think it's the regimental. I think it's the um, the is it the um, the fact that you're getting told what to do, aren't you? Mm. And um, and I got bored. You know, yeah. you're in lessons that you know in geography. I don't really want to know about hills and you know rivers i'm interested in you know getting out there and making some money and i think yeah. a lot of people with my mindset are like that you yeah know, you know it's and would you just stripping it back again like similar to myself so talking about that i i felt exactly the same as you did at school um and for people that listen there's nothing wrong with that but obviously if you don't feel like that there's nothing wrong with that either if that makes sense there is people out there that want to be at school want to learn are very academic and just because we're not like that doesn't mean that that's wrong to want to be academic. But I think this is why I've, I've had this discussion lately, obviously linked to the, the Channel 4 programme, is yeah. that I, I, what, what I found by going in the school and seeing, seeing kids from a teacher's eyes or a support teacher's eyes is a kid's failing so badly, why don't you move them into a subject they're not failing? Do you know? Because yeah. that's what they're going to excel what in. What they enjoy. Yeah, enjoy, you know? And there's, there's kids in there that literally have got no interest in the subject. They're so far behind the grades. I know teachers have to fight hard to get them up the grades. Mm. But ultimately, it is a waste of their energy. Get them into something they like or put them in sport if they can't move them yeah. in the class. Something, you know, because that's that, that and frustrated, I suppose that, that, I suppose that would me. make more 
more sense for the teachers as well because having somebody in your class that's not giving it their all disruptive because technically they don't like science. No, but logistically, when you think about it, 800 kids trying to move them, it's, it is it's quite, tough. Yeah. yeah, it's impossible, really. But it would be yeah, good if they could change the system to a degree, though. I'm, I'm all for that. I think. But they, they, they still, they still teach the core subjects. But let's be honest, 2019, what are core subjects? Because you know, you know, 1970s, they're still the same subjects. Yeah. That they are in, in a modern digital it's world. It's changed. So maybe we need to look at the old curriculum and maybe add a few other things into it. So you briefly just mentioned. Um, being on the on the TV on the show that you've done, yeah. how, how did that come around? Um, how did so, you get invited to do that? Or what so was the, in the last four last four years or so, I've had a bit of PR regarding my background. Okay. You know, I was on benefits. Um, you know, lost my house, sofa surfing, in, and, and kind of grew a business internationally. So it's been a bit of a whirlwind. Yeah. Um, and then and Channel Four got in touch. So uh, and they said that we're interested. In, you know, we've got this show. Would it interest you? And I was like, really? You know, I've got. You know. But then again, I thought to myself, well, I've never seen it from the teacher's eyes. I was the naughty kid. Wouldn't it be good to find a kid like me? Yeah. And, it, and, and luckily, I did. I found a kid called Louis. Who's, okay. He's actually. Because I haven't, I haven't seen the show yet. Oh, so okay. I'm going, I'm... I've lost two and a half stones since then. <laughs> I tell you what, one benefit going on TV. You yeah, lose weight. You lose you know, weight because yeah. it does help you. Right. But, but anyone no, needs anyone? Let me know. <laughs> <laughs> but it's um, yeah. There was a so basically the outcome of the show is there's a, a kid called Louis. Um, who at the end we I'm, I'm kind of mentoring him and I'm okay, happy to did. say now he's joined the business. He has, yeah. Yeah, Fantastic. moved moved him into a house in Leicester, um, and we're kind of accelerating his kind of get not just teach him sales. We're going to put him in marketing, board, bit of everything, bit of everything. Yeah, and and ultimately even if he doesn't stay with us, he's going to walk away with something. Something good. good yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's a good. And kid. did he fall out of school early? Um, or did he stay till the end? What was he? What so was he's so obviously the the, the show finished um, pre exam results okay so that's that's the end of the show and he was you know then he's, he's up to him whether he stays with you know, goes in employment or goes yeah, for further education does. so okay and and the show was it how, how long was you in the show for was it just one series it was, was it yeah, one, it was episode? one episode um all dedicated to kind of my backstory in the school Halebury Turnford in Essex or Epping well, sorry n near me Turnford. yeah I'm, I'm in I'm in Essex myself then it's Chesham yeah, 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 yeah that's where I was um, which is a weird which is a weird place because it's got a mixture of like multi-millionaires and then it's got two two yeah. demographics which is strange because the school is split like that yeah um and yeah i mean it was it, it, it was um it was good the fact that i got to see um the kids in in different scenarios and uh, and in different stresses as well and you went in there and assessed what was happening no, i was a support teacher okay so um, and the kids knew or they didn't know yeah so they knew it was thought it was a documentary about volunteers in education okay um so obviously they understood the cameras there yeah and it was yeah 30 days of i would say 30 days over three months um but only 18 to 19 days filming but they were long days yeah and that's one thing i would say is that when you do it you, you enter these you've got to be dedicated because you know they they get the pound of flesh out of you. You know, yeah. they're, they're doing the literally, you know, waking you up in the hotel room to when you finish, and it's a lot of work, a lot yeah. of work, and a lot of enjoyable. Uh, would I do it again going back in time? Um, I don't know. I mean, obviously, there's been a good outcome for the kids, but reality, it was a lot of stress for it, you know, um, creates a lot of eyeballs. Do you get a lot of negativity online? I've luckily not got too much now, you know, I haven't had bad press really. Um, you know, why should I? I've not done anything no, wrong. No, you've, you've helped somebody. Yeah, but you know, give your honest opinion. But the UK people are, or the British, they like to put people down in success, don't they? Definitely. So, um, which is a bit, you know, one thing I've found with our American business, the Americans champion success. Yes. You know, you can drive Rolls Royce around in Las Vegas and be like looked upon. You ride around Leicester, you get scratched. <laughs> yeah. You know, which is. Um, why? Why do you think that is? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I've, I've never I, got I, to the I, bottom of that. I've looked at that. I just. But it's the truth, honestly. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I've as, got, as, as I've I said to you before, I've had American entrepreneurs on on the podcast. Do, well, do you do you think we do you think English people are maybe a bit like kind of embarrassed by success? Because in America, it's all big and bold, mm. and maybe you know the Dallas lifestyle or whatever. Yeah, I mean, they I, talk it up. They yeah. they're all for it. Uh, they're I, all I, for I, it. A, a salesman in in the United States is looked upon as somebody good. Yeah, a salesperson in the UK has looked at somebody as trying to have somebody over. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, yeah, you're right. I mean, I think it is the, the, the fact in, that America in, in, is, in whatever sector you're in. But America is known as the big, the bold, the beautiful Correct. kind of thing, and I think that is why people look at they don't get shocked by a fancy car. But they, the UK, they like it. Yeah, they like it. They push for it. They push for success, and I just don't see why we don't over here. I don't know. 
because I'm I'm all for success. I'd rather see somebody succeed than not succeed. Well, why do people why people anti capitalism? Without that, we can't build a, the world collapses. You know, mm. it'd be great if we could all live in hobbits, you know, little hovels <laughs> and be you know sell goats or. But yeah. we, the reality is, it's not. We have to pay the bills. We have to build Correct. infrastructure and we have to create jobs. Um, and stripping it back from 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 where we are. So, how did you? Obviously, you said about you you had tough times. Let's let's talk about that and your journey before you, you started the business that you're in now. Um, so you went through school, obviously you, you got asked to leave school. So, right, um, so yeah, I was asked to, well, they called it early study leave. <laughs> Which is, <laughs> like, that, I, remember the, I remember getting my parents in and saying, it was named Mr. Map, so yeah. if he's watching this, yeah, thanks. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. But, um, uh, and they said, instead of being horrible, he says, look, is it better if we let Paul have early study leave, you know, because he's dis disruptive. So yeah. six months before exams, I left the school, then came back for my exams. But I didn't turn up for a lot of them, so I had X in signs for not turning up and stuff like that. Um, I got a job, to be honest, car washing, window cleaning, you anything. know, anything just to, you know, because I was earning more money than the you know, mates of paper out that day. Um, left school, one GCC, uh, decided my career path was the military, joined the Royal Navy. Okay. Um, and so, what age was you when you joined the Navy? Uh, eight, straight out of school. So it was a, a 99. Okay. Yeah, served in conflict in 2003. Okay. Um, what was that like? Look, it's a job, isn't it? And the thing is, it's... Um, Did it give you discipline? Well, that's the reason why I left, because obviously I don't like discipline as much as... Uh, <laughs> I didn't choose the long-term career. As they wanted you to. Yeah, yeah. okay. Um, but it was... Yeah, it was good. I mean, the fact is, I've got, still got friends in the forces. Um, Do you think being in the forces helped you to get where you are today? I could iron a shirt. <laughs> you know, but uh, honestly, yeah, it taught me a lot of things from... You know, I learned to touch type because I was in communications. Okay. I learned a lot about you know um, uh, the technical side of business. Uh, sorry, technical side of IT because I've got a lot, a lot of courses. But there was um, it, it sad out the forces again. Like um, I was off off cut off the coast of Iraq. Okay. I was into Kuwait. I was moving prisoners. Um, you know, it was interesting interesting thing to do. Um, but again, there's no finance. You know. You, it's very low pay for what you do. I know people say you do it for passion, but the reality is you've got bills to pay. Mm. You know, and um, it wasn't for me long term. So yeah, how long uh, was you in the Navy? Uh, four, just I've done for five years, I think four and a half years exactly. Yeah, so um, it was so like I said, still friends with people now, so it was good. Okay. Can't fit my uniform though. <laughs> <laughs> so moving on from the Navy, how, how did your life plan out then? So yeah, left the Navy uh, and I got into direct sales, which is the old knocking doors, double glazing. Um, I've never robbed a granny though, I promise you. <laughs> um, so it was, that's, that I would say to anyone in sales is, you know what, that is, the, that is where you learn. You, you know, the well, psychology. you get the most nose. Yeah, well, you, the thing is, you, your psychology in sales, face to face, you learn about buying habits, asking for orders, how to close a deal on a day, you know, Follow and, and it is proper hard sales. However, you know, long term career, it's not there. You know, you're going to get burnt out. Did that for a, uh, about three to four years. Uh, did all right, got promoted to a branch manager. But then... And what was you selling, just...? It was all home improvements, so yeah. usual kind of direct sales, hard sell, you know. Yeah, windows. Would you sell. say hard sell? No, a bit more like... It was, it was, it was pressure, yeah, yeah, it was hard sell. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> um, but at the end of the day, I must admit, we did get... You know, we, I can sleep at night because it, we did sell a good product and the company's still going now, so that's one benefit. But um, after that... Um, I, I basically went into, it, we were approaching the recession kind of time. Luckily, I bought a house um, when I was in the Navy with the Northern Rock. And in, you know about finance. Yeah. Do you remember the old Together Mortgage? No, I remember Northern Rock. Right, 117% <laughs> of value. Yeah. So they'd lend you more than the house value. Prices went up. Um, they kept remorg I kept remortgaging. They were sending me blank checks saying, you can take this out of the house. Obviously, living past my means, as a, as a young kid would. And um, and I just basically, my life went downhill. No so, business at this time? No something. business. No, I was um, just being young, immature. And um, yeah, when, in, in the end, ended up kind of, well, I lost my house, went on benefits. You know, I remember having my How life. old was you then? I was, it was uh, 2000, I'm, I'm 38 now. It was 2008, yeah, about 2008, 2009. So and that's was, tough to lose your house. Yeah, but the family the, at the time? No, 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 just, just, you. just a girlfriend, just which a girlfriend. left me as well. So then I was single, and when you're single and you've got a few quid, yeah. it's uh, easy kind of going off the rails. How, how did that make you feel? What what was what was going through your head at that time? For people that's out there in that situation now, it's good to know that there's light at the end of the tunnel, but it must make you feel in such a bad place. 
the thing is, the thing it right, if you remember back in the recession, the hardest thing for me was I'd done the direct sales, I burnt myself out, and I decided I wanted to get in the B2B world, right? But the problem is, people on 50K then were going for 30K jobs. Yep. I was good enough to do a 30K job, but I'd have to take a 15K job to get that because gotcha. there was no jobs. Yeah. Um, so I, I was applying and applying and applying, getting more depressed about it. You know, we're talking hundreds of applications, like I know loads of people did. And um, and in the end, you know, like I said, went a bit downhill, benefits, usual story, lost everything, you know. Um, I remember walking to the job centre in New Walk, 75 quid a week, couldn't afford the bus fare. Um, I had my electric bypass, shouldn't say that and that, but you know, because I literally couldn't afford the electric. Yeah, yeah. I was a, it was a dark days. Oh, but, yeah. um, I did get I did get a lucky break and I fi finally got a job working for um, uh, an online like a yellow pages kind of business. So it was. Cool. Was it a lucky break or was it because you'd put yourself out there, kept knocking, kept looking that opportunity Actually, open yeah, for you yourself? Know, I should never say lucky because you do make your own luck in life. Yeah, yeah. but um, yeah. I was you know I was, I was making a lot of applications yeah. and I managed to wing the interview, Good. fresh my suit up, you know. Of course, which you do. You do. You've yeah. got to do it. You know? But you've got to put yourself in that state to want to do that. Yeah. And is, is that tough to do that? I mean, I've never been in that situation, and but obviously there's people out there that are in that situation, and I suppose, just stripping it back, I suppose it is tough to, to want to get up and keep putting applications out when you keep getting knocked back and thinking there must be something easier. The thing is, the time, that, that time, as we all know, was so, was so intense. Mm. You know, the whole world's collapsing around yeah. us. And I think there was, there's, I bet there's more, the multiple on, stories yeah. doing it. And I, I, I suppose there is a bit of luck in that because I, I wouldn't be surprised that I must have done something right in the interview. Yeah. You know, so probably more passion. Or Turned up. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Had a shower. <laughs> Which is good. But, yeah. But, um, but that, that, that job actually changed my life. I mean, I, it was selling Google uh, marketing. So I was selling, um, uh, going to businesses B2B. And got, space. Um, yeah, basically. Well, we were managing their pay-per-click adverts, okay. etc. A bit like Yellow Pages do now. Um, for a company called Touch Local, I think they're still going now. Okay, yeah. um, put me on a great course, learned about Google. Absolutely changed my life, like I said. Fast forward three months, fell out with the manager. Laptop was given back in, in, <laughs> in kind of not like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, left, left that business. Yeah. Um, and I was back on my arse. But... Um, that gave me the taste of the B2B world, the corporate world where you got a suit in your company car, which I kind of bought stability. Um, and uh, then I got a job at Office Depot, so selling stationery, internal account manager, which was uh, great. Yeah. great. I must admit, great company to work for. It was great, I'm still friends with people there now. Um, and um, But again, parted ways, um, kind of fell out of the management and uh, we had a... So is, would you say that that was something that kept happening with where you'd been? Yeah, in, I think, I think your it's just, career? I just think um, some people are just not meant to work for companies. You know, I think it's, you just need, you know, I mean, like yourself, yeah. can, you, can you ever see yourself ever working for someone again? Or can't work? No, if I had to, then yeah, I'd just to get back to where I need to be. Like, you've got to yeah, get your hands, you've got, yeah, yeah you've got to get your hands. Apart from that. We're well, no, same no. now, if I need to, we, if we're struggling for sales, I'll get my hands dirty anyway, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, but no, I did that, anyway, let party companies, then I started working for um, a promotional goods company because of my stationary experience from OD, Office Depot. And um, this is where everything kind of went wrong. So I did, well, for them, I shouldn't say that because I'm a competitor, <laughs> that's why I feel wrong. But no, but the bottom line is, um, you know, I was doing really well for them and I sold them a big job for the NHS. Uh, we sold, you know, a big 45,000 pound order. I think it was 45, yeah, 45,000. And, um, and then the, the, one of the directors there decided not to pay me the commission I was due and made out that it was an order of the business. You know, I'm happy to say it on camera because it's totally factually true. Yeah. And that's when I, I, I'm in this industry, promotional products. It's sustainable, as you all know, a business that can get repeat business is fantastic. Um, it's varied, so you don't get bored. You know, yeah, it's all unlimited. Yeah, and it's, so that's one thing. And, and then I thought, well, I'm doing cold calling for this business. Why don't I use my background of learning about Google, PPC, and combine it to get them to come to me. So that's when I set my own business up. From, that's where it from, a bed, from a bedroom, yeah, yeah. So it was, um, started there and um, he didn't pay me the commission and uh, I, I got a laptop free with a mobile phone. Yeah. Um, and got a clue in business. Went on, uh, I think it's company formations, £17.50, registered the company name, which yeah. is still going now. Um, same company name? Same, same company name, yeah, yeah. And, um, uh, adds, and this is everything branded, right? Well, this is no. Uh, my, it, 
So I had I had a um, a part I had one of my best friends in fairness that he was I said I can't do this on my own why don't you help help me out so we set up Charles Alexander Distribution okay. my middle name's Charles is Alexander gotcha. I thought call it a generic name we can add more strings to the boat and what were you selling then well it was still everything branded so, okay. that was the brand still that okay, was the brand gotcha. so um, but that partner then he moved to America I'm still best friends with him bought him out for five hundred quid. Um, is 50% and then you know fast forward my wife has about 50% <laughs> as you know right so anyway um, but yeah and then fast forward then and we I was working in my bedroom realised I had to get out of the place because um, you've got to go to a place of work the hardest thing is working motivating home. yourself I had no money I couldn't raise funds I had bad credit so I turn around to my customers I've got to say someone's asking for an order they say right the order they want it in five weeks time and um, you know, I knew the delivery was five days. They paid me up front, times up by 10 people. I've got cash flow, reinvest in marketing. It's quite an old trick in, in yeah. business. Um, and I'm happy to say them customers are still with us now. Not all of them, but you know, some Most are. So, and I then moved out of the office, added one staff, and now we, we trade globally. We've, we've got four digital businesses in four countries and 150 staff in UK, 20 odd in, in Vegas. And we're about to go to South Africa and Europe, and it's 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 been it, it's crazy, isn't it? It's crazy, yeah. crazy. I mean, that, 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 and and that there's a bit of stress between those years. Yeah, like, that's what I, that's what I want to hone in on. Yeah, yeah. Is the stress because you know it's people probably listening is like, well, if I'm disruptive at school, all I need to do is get a laptop, sit in my room, and I'm going to take yeah, over the world. You know what? The thing is though, I'll, I, when there is a little bit of luck and or visionary, or whatever you yeah. call it, because in 2010 when I entered the market we're in. There was, I was paying, I don't know if you know about PPC. Yeah. Promotional pens as a keyword was 65p, roughly. It's now nine pound. Mm -hmm. I could not enter my business model now. There's too much competition. Exactly the same yeah. as me. The, so when I first started, leads, uh, inquiries, people inquiring was probably around 47 pound. Yeah. It's now nearly 100 pound. Yeah, exactly. And, and I've always said, people say, oh, what advice could you give me if I was just starting? I was, Look for a new sector. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's true though. I mean, the thing is, um, also there was um, uh, Google-wise. I mean, it's crazy to say it now because we live in this digital PPC Google world. Yeah. But in 2010, four to six competitors. Now there's 40. Yeah. Right. You can you know check online today. Everybody. Luckily, because we're all, we've we've done a good um, SEO campaign. We've always done things honestly online. Yeah. We're now ranking organically one two for everything. Vista mm. printers, Vista, you know, promotional pens, promotional yeah. product. So we. Well, it's we funny promotional pens because. When I first, which is a big, big market. Yeah, when I first dropped out of school, well, when when I got asked to leave school, was why well, I went to work for my father. Early study leave. Early study leave, yeah. <laughs> um, and that was a printing company. We used to print promotional pens oh, for really? the souvenir trade. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, so the likes of the theme parks, um, Fort Park, all the zoos, the pens and pencils. That's what I got taught to do originally. Was be able to print them, silk screen print them. Yeah, yeah. So for and and now most things are done digitally, but that's what we. You'd be surprised to though. I mean, yeah. the big, the biggest, the biggest pen supply. I know we're going a bit off here, but yeah, the yeah. biggest pen supply in UK is actually based in Aldershot, and they do majority. I would the say pen, is, the pen warehouse. Yeah, and, and, you know they, they bought my father's company out. Really? <laughs> yeah. Oh my God, that is a small world. Yeah, so, yeah. only only the small side of it. Yeah. Uh, with, so these was, I'm very good friends which with. Which of a souvenir uh, company? Yeah, yeah. They're one of our. Do you know what? And again, relationships in business. If if that company hadn't supported me from day one, I drove down there, met met the owner, and face to face, and, and he gave us a credit line from pretty much day dot. And from this day, Fantastic. he's we're now. I'm not going to stand camera, but we're doing yeah. all right with him. Yeah, well, good. <laughs> well, it's good, and it's, and it's well about done. relationships. Yeah, my, my father's sold his well the, the company to them, but they was only a small company then. The yeah, 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 when yeah. he bought. When well, he they've bought now gone into digital. Yeah, uh, and uh, a lot of you know a lot of other things as well. Mm. But yeah, so great, great company. Work them really closely. Um, but they are. I mean, that's what I'm saying. They're still doing a lot of silk screening, believe yeah. it or not. So yeah. there's still a market for that. Mm. A bit and messy, but you know. Yeah, just just a bit. <laughs> that's what I, that's what I learned to do, and then. I built his company as as a sales consultant there and took it to where it went oh. for him to then move it on Brilliant. And, and, and move out of that sector. But I mean, as, as our, I mean, our market goes now, and the thing is with, with I always say to people is like, they're, they're surprised about how big uh, such a simple product can be, but when someone has a pen, like a big pen, yeah. right, it's a pen, but when you put their name on it, it Different. becomes passionate. Well, you know, and you, we, we have to brand everything, as they say. Exactly, yeah, yeah, <laughs> everything branded. So, um, but it is true. It's you know, when you put when you put your stamp on it, you, you've gone from a business to sorry, you've gone from a sole trader to a business, correct? Because you've got your brand, you're passionate about your brand, and um, and that's 
that's what we sell all the time yeah. to our customers. You know, you be proud of what you've achieved. What you've got and, and what you're doing. That's, yeah. that's what it's about. And if people don't know who you are, how can they do business with you? Yeah, but it's also perception. You turn up with a bick, or you, it is how people perceive things. Mm. Believe it or not, people believe the bullshit, don't they? They mm. believe all the actual, um, you know, they believe the, they just do. You know, you can turn up in, a, in a, a white van, you can do the same job, but if it's a brand new van with a sign, you probably would trust him more. Yeah. Which is stupid, but it's Very, how we are. But that, that is the way that we are. Um, so just going back to, you know, inspirations and, and being motivated throughout your business career it's, it's fair to say that you've been very successful dominating the UK now you've gone overseas to America and you said Canada and a couple of other places that you're looking at who, who have you looked up to who's mentored you who's helped you well I'm actually um, I mean I've always I remember the kid Dragon's Den obviously grew up there watching yeah. it you know um, I'm actually a partner of the Peter Jones Foundation okay so i um, yeah, you know, Peter's a great guy. I'm, I'm doing some entrepreneurship with the with the foundation um, to champion young kids. So I've just set a branding challenge that they're going to put in schools, and they're going to be trying to they're going to be um, uh, seeing the challenge and then basically pitching back to me. And then you know, so yeah, Peter Jones, obviously, okay. and the Dragons, I suppose. Um, yeah. Richard Branson. Mm. You know, I was fortunate enough to spend time with him on Necker Island. So he was, yeah. Yes, uh, I see that in the guy. press actually. He was a fantastic guy. You What's know? the island like? Hot. <laughs> <laughs> um, a lot of alcohol as well. Yeah. Um, but no, it, that was a bucket list thing. The fact is, I, I, I always said if we could afford to do something nice, I'd love to go. You know, it was on a TV show, and I wanted to do it, and we did it. And I got off a boat when we got there, and he was he was out there in the gym, outdoor gym. Yeah. And he greeted me. I was like, "What's going on? Is that, <laughs> is that really rich?" Yeah. yeah. And then next thing you know, you're playing tennis with him. So he Great. was a fantastic guy. And talking about that bucket list and, and stripping it back. There's so, there's so much content out there for, for young entrepreneurs that are inspiring to, to, to have a go and go out there and start a business. What, what's the biggest bit of advice that you could give somebody well, right now? Well, funny, so we we're talking about Richard Branson there, right? So, so he has a book, Screw It, Let's Do It. Yep, right? very and, good book. And I was recently on a, um, a panel with um, the foundation, Peter Jones, and there was a guy in the audience, and they said he had this great idea, and, and he came to me, he goes, well, you know, well, an idea is nothing. So you have to literally screw it, let's do it. You know, actually launch the idea, because what's an idea worth? It's worth nothing. Mm. He was scared to share his idea Just with other people, it. but it doesn't, it's got no value. Yeah. And, and this is the thing, it's, so my advice, you've got to try something. Yeah. If, if you've got proof of concept and you've got a market, then you've got to do something with it. That, you know. If yeah, you, I agree. Yeah, unless you can, uh, unless you, well, that's, that's it. It's simple, mm. isn't it? Yeah. And is there any routines or anything like that that you start your day with or in, end your day with? Is there anything that you could give to people that they should try that's proven for yourself, got you to where you are today? I mean, end of the day, like yourself, you, you, you spend time with people successful, you're going to be successful. Your network. And, and the thing is, negativity don't help no one because yeah. the, the, if, you, if you surround yourself with negative people, and this is what I've learned from other people, I'm yeah. not, you know, this is not a, this is not fame, this is not something new. Yeah, of course, then you're no. not going to be, you're not going to be positive, are you? No, that's right. You've got to be with positive people. And if you surround yourself with people that always say, no, 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 and you, you've got an idea, get around a new circle of friends where people say, yes, yes, yes. Try it. They've got to champion you, they've got to believe in you, and give it a go. Yeah. Yeah, but the, but the, the the key thing to me, I, I think, is we're about to launch a new. Uh, I've got a meeting tomorrow. Actually, we're going to be launching actual brand with um, someone's quite well known on TV. So that is going to be their own skincare range and a, a clothing range, um, and that's a new market for us. It'll probably be live in February next year, two thousand twenty, okay. um, and that's something that you know you've got to. Again, surround yourself with positive people. It's an idea. I'm yeah, going to try see how it, it goes. Yeah, but we've got proof of proof of concept. So I would say if you've got an idea, do your market research, whether yeah. it's knocking doors or putting leaflets out or doing you know Surveys. with a clipboard or anything, or do your digital meet, you know, mm. using analytics. Do that. Find your, your proof of concept. If chocolate fire guards sell, you know, you'll find out yeah. somehow. Yeah, yeah. And then um, you've got your proof concept. See if you need to raise money. If you don't, you've got nothing to lose, have you? Mm. It's worth a go. Yeah. Well, look. Great, great to have you. That you've just really answered what my next question was. Oh, what, what's, what's coming? What, what's in the future? Apart from what you've just told us about the new brand that's uh, coming uh, in. Yeah, is there so anything we, else that you've, you've got lined up? Yeah. Any so more we, TV appearances? No, no, not at all. <laughs> um, probably fat camp, who knows? <laughs> I don't know. Um, no, I mean, my focus is the business. And yeah. I'm going to back to America for, for, for work. I've got, yeah. We've got to get sort of some offices over there. 
Um, but the American market, 27 billion for us, you know, compared to UK, one billion pounds. You know, it'd be stupid not to explore that. That's my main focus, really. Yeah. It's a huge market. We're also going to open digitally in South Africa and also in Germany. So yeah. that's all happening. But it's all technology as well and cash flow. Of course. You know, without the cash flow, you can't, can't do anything do much, nowadays. Yeah. So. Well, look, thanks for coming on. Yeah. Um, if anybody needs anything branded, the website that they need to go to. Yeah, um, UK, everythingbranded.co.uk. Yeah. Um, yeah, give us a call. You know, our, our USP is we'll, we'll give you free design. Yeah. We also give credit terms. You know, okay. quite, you know we, we are, we make it easy for you to buy. So we'll take all the stress out of your promotion. Yeah. You know, let, you'll get a dedicated account manager from like order to, to delivery. Um, and. Our doors open as well. Fine. Welcome to come in for yeah, a coffee. If there's anyone or out a cocktail there, on a Friday. On a cocktail on a Friday. Oh, yeah. You're in a queue. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, Paul, thanks for coming on. It's been a pleasure thanks. to have you on. Um, and hopefully everything goes well for you in the future.